friends, welcome back to lecture 2 in the Stroke Imaging Series. In this lecture, we shall discuss about the role of MRI in acute stroke, to be specific, the role of diffusion weighted MRI. What will we discuss in this lecture? We shall discuss the MRI stroke sequence of choice, which is nothing but the diffusion weighted imaging. Then we shall discuss what should you look for in diffusion weighted imaging. Then we shall discuss about what you mean by the term diffusion restriction and what are its causes in infant. And finally, we should try to differentiate between the T2 shine through effect and the true diffusion restriction. So let's begin. If somebody asks you which is the investigation of choice in acute ischemic stroke, definitely your answer will be MRI. And to be more specific, you have to say the sequence of choice is the diffusion-weighted imaging. Okay? Now the question comes, why diffusion-weighted imaging? Why not the conventional ones like the T1-weighted or the T2-weighted? The answer is simple. The diffusion-weighted imaging will detect changes in ischemic stroke as early as 20 to 30 minutes. So it's very highly sensitive. Within 20 to 30 minutes of insult, change will be apparent on diffusion weighted in MRI. So what about the conventional t the sequences? It will take much longer, longer than 6 hours to detect any findings. So the stroke imaging of sequences, diffusion weighted MRI. Now the question is, what are you going to look for in diffusion weighted imaging? You're going to look for something known as the diffusion restriction. So, infarcted tissue, ischemic stroke, infarcted tissue will give rise to diffusion restriction and it is seen as hyper intensity on diffusion weighted images. Now, gradually a question will come, why do you get diffusion restriction in MRI in infarcted tissue? To answer that, you should know two things. One is the physics behind the imaging and secondly, you should know the cause of diffusion restriction in infant. So both of these are very extensive. It requires separate lecture, but I'll give you brief introduction. So we know that our human body is made up of millions and millions of proteins. And what does the MRI do in imaging? What is the principle? We are going to emit some signal. The proteins are going to receive it and it is going to gives back some signal and we are going to capture this signal. Now specifically what is diffusion weighted imaging going to do? It is going to measure something known as the Brownian motion. Brownian motion of water proteins. So in our body the hydrogen protons are in a state of continuous random motion like this. Okay and the diffusion weighted imaging measures this motion, if it is normal, it gives a normal picture like this, with no evidence of hyperintensity or no other change. This is normal. This is due to the free random motion of the water proteins. Now, what happens in pathology? In pathologies, like infarct, there will be restriction of the motion of these water proteins. They are no longer free to move. So here remember, infarct is not just a condition that causes the, uh, a restriction of motion of the proteins. There are several neoplasms too. I won't go into the details, but remember, infarcted tissue will be restriction of motion of the water proteins. And our diffusion weighted imaging is going to measure the diffusion of the proteins and it detects it to be restricted, giving you this bright signal. We will answer the first part of the question briefly, the physics behind imaging. Now we have to answer why do infarcted tissue show diffusion restriction? There are two theories. One, we know that in case of normal homeostasis with normal functioning sodium potassium ATPase, everything is smooth. Okay, this is how the cells in the blood brain barrier will look like. Okay? Now, what happens in infarct? As discussed in the previous lecture, when there is a decrease in the blood supply, 
there would be failure of energy pump, energy to the cells. So the sodium potassium ATP fails to work. Once it fails, the homeostasis is lost. So what will happen? There is influx of water, water molecules from the extracellular space to the intracellular space. Okay, that will result in a condition known as cytotoxic edema. You can see the cells will be swollen up. So what happens when the cells are swollen up? When the cells are swollen up, there will be restriction of the motion of the protons. Motion of the protons. Okay. So that will manifest as diffusion restriction. This is one reason. Now let's see the second reason. The second reason is that in cases of infarct, there are normal transmembrane proteins known as the aquaporin 4. So you can see here, this is the blood brain barrier. Over here, there are lots and lots of aquaporin 4. In cases of infarct, these are reduced in number. You get it in the blood brain barrier, you get it in the cells of the brain tissue. So once these aquaporins are reduced, what will happen? There is decrease in the diffusivity of water. So the aquaporin will help in the water diffusion or proton diffusion. This will be lost or decreased in cases of infarct as the level of aquaporin is reduced. And that will again manifest as diffusion restriction. So these are the two important causes why infarcted tissues will show diffusion restriction. One is cytotoxic edema, the other one is a decrease in the aquaporin 4. Now, we said that diffusion restriction will manifest as bright signal in diffusion weighted imaging. Now a question arises, is it enough just to look at this image? This is known as the trace diffusion weighted image. No. Never interpret diffusion weighted image alone with trace diffusion weighted image. You have to use something known as the ABC map or the apparent diffusion coefficient map. So, coefficient map. So, what are you going to expect in true diffusion restriction? True diffusion restriction will show hyperindent signals or diffusion, trace diffusion weighted map and will show no corresponding low signal intensity in ADC map. Only if you get low signal intensity on ADC map along with hyper intensity on diffusion weighted imaging can you call it as true diffusion restriction. Now, if you look at this image, as I said, this is the trace diffusion image map, the trace diffusion weighted image, and this is the ADC map. You have to remember that ADC map will purely reflect what? Purely reflect the diffusion of tissue. So what about the diffusion weighted image? It has got two properties. It has properties to reflect the diffusion of the water protons. At the same time, it has got some T2 effect. That is, diffusion weighted image is a complex imaging process where final result of image will show properties of both diffusion of the tissue as well as their T2 relaxation properties. For example, tissues which have, which have long T2 relaxation time that will appear bright on T2 weighted images like fluid, CSF, they may show bright signals on diffusion weighted image because it has got inherent T2 effect. But what will happen to such tissues at ADC map? Look here. These are the ventricles. These are the fluids. CSF within the ventricle. What is it? How is it appearing in ADC map? It is appearing bright. There is no signal loss. So, I will give you an example. Look at another scenario. When I am seeing, this is a diffusion weighted image, trace image, and this is the ADC map. In this image, I am seeing a hyper intensity over here on the right side. Okay? Now, to call a diffusion restriction, what should I get? I should see hyper intensity on ADC map. Am I seeing it here? No. So this is not a case of diffusion restriction, but instead it is a phenomenon called T2 shine through. So what is the reason behind T2 shine through? These are the tissues which have long T2 relaxation time, which will appear very bright on T2 images, 
and also bright on diffusion weighted images because the diffusion weighted images has got the inherent T2 effect. Okay, but this image where you get bright on trace diffusion image with fine ADC or low signal on ADC map, this is a case of diffusion restriction. So that is the difference between diffusion restriction and T2 shine through. Now again we may be confused. Same thing shown two different appearances. Why? So I said again, remember ADC will reflect only diffusion. Okay? So what happened? When the diffusion is restricted, conventionally what will happen? It will show no signal. So diffusion restricted tissue will show no signal because ADC only measures diffusion. But diffusion weighted trace mapping, what will it do? It is going to measure both T2 effect as well as diffusion. So it's a complex imaging process where you're giving multiple gradients. Okay, is that the infected tissue, the dead tissue will appear bright in such an image. Whereas the normal tissue will lose their signal in such image. So these are all normal tissues. By the end of application of gradient, those normal tissue will lose signal. That is why it is appearing normal. Whereas the infected tissue will appear bright. This is why you get one kind of signal in trace map, trace image and you get other signal in ADC map. But this is very important concept. Now somebody may ask you, can you predict the age of infarct based on diffusion weighted imaging? The answer is yes. Definitely we know that acute infarct or hyperacute infarct will show diffusion restriction. We know that for sure. But how long? How long? Can you answer that? Yes. A good rule of thumb is that if in ADC map there is low signal or in trace diffusion weighted image there is high signal, the infarct is less than one week old. We now there is another concept or uh, another dilemma, a situation called diffusion negative stroke. So even if you have ischemic stroke, there may be con conditions in which you cannot pick it up. What are they? There are three important conditions. One is the presence of small lacunar infants, okay, due to occlusion of penetrating vessels. Secondly, it is seen in posterior circulation stroke, that is classically the brainstem stroke. And finally, if you have a condition like there is a clot occluding the vessel, but it has undergone lysis within a short time uh, due to weak analyzation, Again, you will not detect diffusion restriction or MRI. Now, summarizing what we have learned today, the stroke sequence of choice is diffusion weighted imaging. And remember, always interpret diffusion weighted imaging along with the ADC map. And what are you going to look for in acute infarct? You are going to look for diffusion restriction, which manifests as bright signal on diffusion weighted imaging and low in ADC map. Now we have seen the causes of diffusion restriction in stroke or ischemic stroke or infarct, which is due to cytotoxic edema and also due to decrease in the aquaporin 4. And finally, we have known, known we have familiarized ourselves with a condition called T2 shine through, where there, there is high signal on diffusion weighted image without low signal on ADC because of tissues having long T2 relaxation time. You should always differentiate them from true diffusion restriction. I hope this is clear. Stay tuned for next lecture which will be on the conventional MRI in acute stroke. Thank you very much.